Welcome back to Smith Coding and Design. I hope everyone has had a good week. I know here in Maryland, it's been filled with rain, although we did have a couple beautiful days. So with that being said, what I wanted to do today is just sort of go ahead and finish the coolant manifold. So I wanted to go over how I made the lid and then we'll get into op three of the manifold body, which is just adding the coolant port. Uh, so with that being said, what I have here is uh, the lid so if we go to op one we'll just sort of walk through this quickly that way we can get to the machining i'm sure i'm sure you all want to see the sile doing its work instead of my, my ugly mug so let's go ahead and get through this all right so the first thing that i do is i go ahead and probe my stock now an important thing to note here is my wcs origin is on the pin of my pearson palette base and so again, I'm using the community driven mac macros that I helped write. So there's a zero point compensation that you can enable in the post processor uh, that allows you to go ahead and use your zero point and then just go ahead and probe in your stock and then update the X, Y location of that zero point based on the deviation that your stock is away from where it's supposed to be. So that being said, the first thing I do is is probe and indicate in the stock and then I come in with a shell mill we face uh, the top of the lid again I'm using I think it's eight and a half eight and a half in length eight and a half inches in length and a half of an inch thick piece of material and that will come into play here in a minute when we get into op two so I do my facing I come in and I do my 3d adaptive clearing Moving on, I do a contour to go ahead and finish up the sidewalls, and then we get into drilling. So here in the center is four holes that will be tapped M5 for rubberized magnets. That way, again, this can sort of attach to the spindle cover, and I don't have to drill any holes or anything to support the coolant manifold. It will be supported by those magnets, and I believe each one of them supposedly, if you believe it, holds with 30 pounds of force. Uh, so that should be plenty enough to hold the coolant manifold to the sile while it is pressurized. Uh, so moving on. So next we're just going to go through and drill some holes that will allow us to put some M3 you know, socket cap screws through the lid to hold it onto the base of the manifold. And so here I didn't have the exact drill size I wanted for the to make the clearance for those holes. So I just come down with an eighth of an inch end mill after I do the drilling operation just to go ahead and clean up the walls of the hole. That way my M3 screw will fit in. Uh, from there we go ahead and we thread those M5 screws and then we just do a series of chamfering operations to go ahead and finish off the top of our lid. Now it gets uh, slightly more interesting when we get into OP2. So one of the things that I was worried about is the lid itself is only a quarter of an inch thick and I didn't want to you know squeeze that down with the vise and potentially bow the part or you know worry about faulty work holding and as you've probably seen in some of the sign forums or in some other YouTube videos I don't want to throw a part through my window <laughs> so let me know you know what you guys are comfortable with what is the thinnest material and I guess in this case it's 6061 uh, that you feel comfortable clamping in a vise without compromising your work holding. So instead what I did is I made a fixture and I'm using sort of the knife makers method. So underneath of this fixture, you know, are through holes that way I can go ahead and tighten down uh, this lid for op two and hold it from the bottom, you know, with those socket M5 socket cap screws coming through the bottom and pulling down on the fixture. So again, everything I'm doing here for both ops is in reference to the zero point on my Pearson palette. And so what I do without probing is I come through and I face off the top hat of material. And so this is ugly. So what I'm using here is just a 3 8 end mill to go remove that material. And that's not how I started. What I started with was the two inch shell mill. 
And what happened is when I got here to this large swath of the hat of material that is not supported underneath, uh, the shell mill tore off a big chunk of material and I had to go check my britches. <laughs> it, it really scared me. Um, luckily, you know, nothing was damaged, anything like that. Just, you know, a loud boom and sort of scared me. Uh, so with that being said, what I decided to do was be very conservative, come in here with the 3 8 inch helical end mill, and I'm just doing a facing operation, removing the rest of that material. So next time, I will, I will definitely <laughs> consider, you know, the unsupported sections of my material. Normally, I would do a... A 3d adaptive first um, but what my plan was was to go ahead and face off the material and then come in and probe the fixture you know that way I could get the chamfers chamfers perfect so I think a smarter idea would have been to remove the part from the fixture move the probing operation in front of the facing operation indicate in my fixture and then lay the part back on the fixture and tighten it from underneath. I think, let's look, I think there's enough room where I could get my hand under there to go ahead and, you know, tighten some M5 screws. Uh, that way I wouldn't have had this issue. And, and then instead of, you know, doing a facing operation here, I could have just done, you know, a 3D adaptive clearing, got rid of... 99% of the material and then came back with the shell mill and left the beautiful surface finish on the top So that's really it for the lid. You know again We indicated in this fixture after we did the facing operation just so all of our chamfers line up perfectly So really the last part to finishing the coolant manifold is really op 3 of the body here Which I'm calling the coolant port so you'll notice there's a hole on the back side here and that is tapped 3 8 NPT and so how I go about doing that is again the first thing that I do is I probe the part to make sure I'm centered in XY and the way that I'm holding this so you can see it's sort of vertical here and this is a machine a machine the can't talk this is a machine soft jaw you know holding it in place so if we go back here so we have our soft jaw again our WCS is always at the pin on the base of our Pearson palette we come through uh, we probe indicate in our part and then we start machining and it's really easy uh, there's a boring operation and then the thread mill um, so one other interesting thing you'll notice here Get back to home view, or maybe we'll just zoom in. As you'll notice, I have a sketch. And this is sort of outlining uh, the radius of this corner on, on the actual part. So when I tried to do this probing operation with that radius there, uh, for some reason... Fusion All right, sorry about that. My video cut out. What I was trying to describe is that I had to go and break the link in the design tab and then get rid of the fillets here on the edges of my parts. Those fillets were a quarter of an inch because Fusion would not recognize the probing routine I wanted it to use. So after I removed the fillets on the corners of my parts and I made them square, then I could go in and select the rectangular boss strategy that I wanted to use for probing. And what I did to make sure that I got my probing correct is I made a sketch on the back side and then I put in that sketch I put the original radius that these corners would be so that way when I went through and used the probing routine I could come down here and make sure I probed the face of the wall uh, for, far enough down that I would not probe the radius itself. Um, so with that being said, that's how I got around Fusion not recognizing the probing strategy I wanted to use. And then from there, it's really just a bore, boring operation and then a thread mill. And so that finishes the coolant manifold. We'll go ahead and get into the machining on the sile now. All right, so here we see the sile finally in action. We're starting by probing the material. I'm using a silver CNC probe. I recommend it over 
the Pioneer probe that is offered by Sile. For one, it is $1,800 versus the five grand for the Pioneer. Two, I've read a lot of stories about the Pioneer probe burning through batteries quickly. I've had the Silver CNC probe over six months and have not had a battery issue. With that being said, with the LNC controller, I don't know about the other ones. You can really use any probe you want and you just need to change the setting in the controller to be normally open or normally closed depending upon your choice of probe. You'll notice there's a sliver of material already missing and that be, that is because when I first attempted to do the facing operation along the y-axis I ran into the machine boundaries so I had to switch to a horizontal or along the x-axis as you see here. So really, I'm just using the two inch shell mill, 100 inches per minute, one inch width of cut, 50 thou depth of cut at 5,000 RPM. And we are just facing off the top of the material, trying to get a nice and beautiful surface finish. So with that being said, we will go ahead and transition into the roughing. So here we are doing a 3D adaptive clearing with a 3 8 inch helical end mill, 100 inches per minute, 56 thousandths with a cut and 250 thousandths depth of cut at 8,000 RPM. So there's not much to it, just trying to remove the material. And so what we'll do now is we will transition into our 2D contour toolpath where we are going to go ahead and use the same 3 8 inch helical end mill. Uh, this time we are running at 48 inches per minute. And again, just taking the 20 thou off of the sidewalls and we are the full part thickness depth of cut or a quarter of an inch at 8,000 RPM. And so what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and transition into the drilling operations. So here I am using Haas carbide end mills that have a DLC coating. I got them on sale through Haas for around 20 bucks a piece. So I've been purchasing more and more Haas tooling as I mentioned in the previous videos. So let me know what you guys think about Haas tooling. For me, it seems to be a good bang for the buck. I mean, here I'm paying $20 a drill instead of $50 or $60 a drill if I was going to go the Kinemetal route. And again, not saying anything bad about Kinemetal. I do love their go drills. But when I can pay half the price for something that seems equivalent in terms of performance, at least so far in my testing, I am going to take that approach all right so now let's transition into our thread milling so what I'm using here is an online carbide thread mill I'm threading the holes m5 at 5k rpm again I use online carbide thread mills really because it's one of the places that I can find the cheapest carbide thread mills that still seem to perform well so Again, when I, I do this as a hobby, not as a job shop, so I try to you know, take as much bang for the buck as I can. So now we're going to move into OP2, and this is where you'll hear the bang, or maybe you can't hear it because my voice is sort of masking it. So you'll see I ripped that large sliver of material off, and so I had to stop and then adjust the tool pass where I didn't use the shell mill. And so what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and transition into op three of the coolant manifold. So this is where we're going to make the coolant port. Again, just starting out by using that silver CNC probe to go ahead and do a rectangular boss strategy or rectangular boss probing routine in this case, just so that we can center our X and Y so that we put the coolant port exactly in the middle of our manifold. So with that being said, we'll now go ahead and transition into our boring operation. All right, so here we are machining our 3 8 NPT hole, so it is tapered. Again, I'm using the 3 8 inch helical end mill, 24 inches per minute on this boring tool path at 8,000 RPM. And so now we'll go to the thread milling operation again using an online carbide thread mill, this time thread milling 3.8 NPT, 5,000 RPM again. 
So let me know if you guys have used online car buy three thread mills or if you have a better source of thread mills that give a decent bang for the buck. So with that being said, that is all of the machining. I hope you enjoyed and now we'll just go and see the finished part and let me know what you think. All right, so here we are at the machine. Op 3 just finished. So you'll see here I have the part sort of standing up vertically. It has been fully machined. So this is the final op. What's sort of unique here is I do have a set of soft jaws. Again, that's holding it up in the vertical position. Uh, the soft jaws are machined to center it. And I did probe and you'll see that in the video of the machining where I go through and I I probed the top of the part before I start machining. And so the reason why this needed to be up in a vertical position here is because I have this 3 8 MPT elbow and this elbow has again 3 8 MPT on one side and a 5 8 barb connector on the other side. And so this is where the coolant will go into the manifold. This manifold is meant to replace this coolant bar. It's going to be low profile and it should go up and fit nice and snug against the spindle so why i need this elbow again so it's going to connect to a hose and you can't see it very well uh, but it, it will go back there i think i'll need a 3 8 mpt to bsp connector uh, but again i'm just going with barbed fittings for now and so that's really it i have you know just my mari tool gauge in here for now to keep any chips from going up into the spindle because i'm about to go ahead and wash, use the wash down hose and just clean up. All right, so one last video here. Here is the coolant manifold complete. So I went with the turret jets from Mari Tool for the coolant nozzles. And here's the front side, as you can see, it has rubberized magnets on the lid. That way it will just plop and, you know, connect to the sile coolant housing or the sile spindle housing sorry without any issues so that is it i hope you enjoyed the build process and i will see you in the next video